Hi, this is Margaret O'Brien from dataminingdna.com. In a previous video, I did a walkthrough of installing the free version of Roots Magic, called Roots Magic Essentials, to download your Ancestry tree as a backup and also take down all the Ancestry source media. So here's Roots Magic here. If I go back to a particular individual in my tree, this person here, and take a look at the media associated with this particular individual. Once again, now you see what I have here, are two Im images, and they are census record. Now, what I want to show you, though, is the names of these files as they appear, as they have been saved down into my local folder. So here's the local folder, and I'm just displaying the file names here, and this is my local PC, my local folder, and here where you see nicely named files that start... It's, this is my naming convention for files that I upload, pictures in this case from other third-party archives that I upload to Ancestry. If I scroll down a little bit, and now I start seeing all these cryptic names, and these are the source media downloaded from Ancestry record images. And what that means is it's quite difficult to sort and filter through here and use this as an external resource. So in the previous video, I went looking for a way to reach into the Roots Magic local database, find the association between this particular file name and the person it's associated in my tree, and rename it accordingly, something similar to what I've got up here. So I had a look out there on the interweb, and I found a website with the details of somebody who had already done something like this. But to cut a long story short, when I ran the script, it didn't work for me. So I spent a bit of time troubleshooting and working out a script that is very much an adaptation of the scripts of, and just to give him the full credit, of Tom Holden. And I've got a version that does what I want. Now Tom Holden's scripts actually change the file names within the Roots Magic media folder. I don't really want to touch that. So what I want to do I want to have is take a copy of that folder and achieve a renaming of the files on a copy. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have an application that will connect to the local Roots Magic database. And the I think part of the problem is why I couldn't get this to work is that the reference was to this SQLite Manager application. I couldn't get, there is a Chrome extension of that name which I couldn't get it to work. Um, so what I did find was a different tool, the SQLite browser. So I'll put a link down into the description below. It's a Windows application. You're probably going to take down, this is the download folder. If you're working on Windows, you're probably going to take down the 64-bit version. And there's also a version for the Mac. I'm using the Windows version, right? So it's a download and a standard install. I'm now going to open it. So I'm just typing in SQL. There we go. We've got DB Browser SQL Lite. Just open that. So now I've got the DB Browser for SQL Lite open. I now need to connect to the particular Roots Magic local database. So I'm working with because the prior attempt didn't work. I downloaded a new backup of my main tree which I called attempt to <laughs> and in the previous video I was trying to figure out well, where is the database on my local machine and it is in you can see it in file properties that's where its location is on my local machine but I <laughs> today I realized that it's that it's also telling me where it is exactly right up there at the top of the screen Okay, so it's in my documents folder and it's called attempt2.rmgc. Okay, so that's that's a file, that's that's a database file. So I need to open that with DB Browser. Now one of the quirks with DB Browser, so I'm going to file open database and I'll go to my documents folder and I can't see it. That's simply because by default DB Browser is lo looking for a file with an extension of .db or .sql. And the Roots Magic extension, proprietary extension, is .rgmc. So just 
change that to all files and there we go attempt to and I'm just gonna open that and what I'm seeing now are all the tables in the database and what I want to do is I want to run my amended script which is a cut down version of Tom Holden script with a few changes so that it wouldn't crash running via SQL via the DB Lite browser. Okay, so in order to execute SQL, here we go. I'm here are the tabs up here. I'm going to go to the last tab, which is execute SQL. Now, what I'm what this script is going to do is going to generate a whole lot of DOS commands, basically rename commands from the original file name to a to a more meaningful file name. The SQL script itself isn't going to do anything to your host machine. There'll be a link on how to get the script down in the description below. I'm just copying it now. I have it in Notepad and I'm just copying it now. And what it does is it doesn't actually make any changes to your RootsMagic database. And it's working out the link between the file, those file names and the citation and the person. And then it's going to select a whole lot of rename statements to the output window. So I'm just going to run this from the top, right? I'm just going to run it all. Um, this button here, this play is execute all. Just make sure you don't have anything particular selected. Or else you can control A, I think. Can you? Yeah. And can just execute all as well. Okay. So I'm just going to run that. And what I see down here is execution finished without errors. And my problem in my prior video was that I had errors and it didn't complete. It was also spread across two scripts. I just wanted it in one script and I got rid of a lot of extraneous stuff that I didn't need. Okay, so that is the output of the actual command, the, the, success, the success failure. And this here, this window here, is this last statement, which is selecting from a temporary table. And it's put it here. So if I expand, and expand that and I just take one line I'll take this line here just gonna copy that into notepad so that's a single line of the multiple lines that are being returned in this window here and this is a DOS it is Windows command so I don't actually know if this is the same on a Mac OS but if it's not it'll be very similar it's a batch command it's a DOS command that we're going to be running from a command window it's the rename command. So you're renaming w one file to another. You're not doing a copy, you're doing a rename of the existing file. That's why I want to do it on a copy of the folder. So this is saying rename this file, this cryptic file, and the way that Tom Holden has, I made a slight, couple of slight changes, but basically we've got the name of the person, who's Florence Burke, we've got a birth date and death date, which is great because you, know, you could have multiple Florence Burks, and then we have the index, the or if in ancestry terms, it's, it's the name of the collection. And what I do is stuck this index in the middle just to make it a little bit clearer visually. And then I wasn't sure if I still wanted this, but what I'm doing here, or what Tom, I kept Tom's bit where he's adding on as a tag the name of the original file. So that's just one line, and I don't want just one line. What I want is to take all of these lines and run them, not individually, but as a batch script. So this is the, com the Windows command prompt. So where is the Roots Magic media folder? It is where your database is, and then it's the name of the database with underscore media. So here's my attempt to underscore media. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one level and I'm just going to copy this. Control C, Control V. And that gives me this attempt to media underscore copy. And I could name that, rename that to something fancier, but I won't. I just go straight into this. So this is a copy. Okay. So in my DOS command prompt, I do want to change to that folder. So I'm sitting here in a different, my root folder. I'm going to change directory cd and then in case there were spaces which there are oh, there are spaces in the the windows folder name i'm going to put the name of the folder within quotations yeah so cd 
take the name of the folder and just put it in quotations if you have spaces in it. Okay, and now you see that I am sitting now within the folder that I want to work in. Okay, and now I need to create a script and I'm going to drop the script in that folder. So I have here, I have Notepad. So I'm just going to take out that line that I showed you as an example. And then I'm going to copy the entire, I'm going to control A and copy everything in that window into my batch script. And I noticed that Tom said to take out the first line because I have a feeling he's working on a Mac and I think the Mac would have, it may be putting in the CMD into the top line. It certainly doesn't do it for me. I just get the space. The space, I don't, don't mind about the space. So now I'm going to save this as a batch script. Now this is important in terms of how you name it, in terms of the extension. So do file save as. I am saving it into this copy folder and I'm going to call it rename and by default this will just give it a .txt that's not going to work you need to give it .bat .bat is a batch script so you'll be able to execute it so rename .bat click save and now that file if I go by date there is my rename .bat with all those rename commands okay so now I can run it I could double click it, but I'm going to I'm going to run it from the from the command prompt. If you double click it, this will also work, but I'm going to run it from here. So let's just find it. Is it in there? Yep, there it is, the rename.bat. That's just me checking that it is in here. But now all I want to do is I want to type rename.bat. Okay. That I'm calling the script. I'm hitting enter. Ah yeah, okay, I get the output. So it's just, what it's done is it's output every single command. I also could see visually something had changed in the Windows folder behind this screen. So if I go back up to the Windows folder, I just, let's say, order this by the name. I'm ordering this by name. What you can see there are my original files that I uploaded. It hasn't touched the non ancestry source media files so remember I said I have uploaded a whole series of JPEGs that I named myself and Roots Magic Essentials takes them down beautifully but what we don't see as I scroll down I no longer see all those cryptically named files what I am seeing is here was that first example of Florence Burke and there is the original file name tacked on at the end but the rename has renamed it with Last name, first name, birth year, death year, I just put in index, and then the name of the collection. And what you can see is, yeah, it's all done very nicely and mixed in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that script uh, to my blog, and there will be instructions on the, this YouTube video description below as how to get a copy of it. So that's it in terms of demo of running the SQL script. The companion blog article has a section on getting a copy of our SQL script. We will send you a link if you follow the instructions. So this article is a step-by-step -step from the top where we're showing you how to install Roots Magic Essentials and download your Ancestry tree and all of those steps are in another video. We're then instructing you to copy the Roots Magic Media folder, install SQLite browser on your local machine, and then the step four, which is to get a copy of our SQL script. And finally, step five, use the SQLite browser to run our SQL script. And step five, and indeed installing the browser tool, is covered within this particular YouTube video. So it's a little bit of, of a circular reference there. But between this article and this video, you have all the information you need. If you want more technical information of the changes that I made, to the original scripts in order to get it to run <laughs> in the first place and also how I modified it just I made some slight modifications in order to put the name of the files in the format that I wanted then I'm splitting that out into a separate 
YouTube video. But if you do want to make further changes to have your own naming convention, you'll get all the information you need in that separate video, which I will also link in the description below.